Hello everyone. In this set of videos, we're gonna begin our discussion of priority queues. And in particular, we're gonna focus this almost entirely on heaps, but we might as well begin discussing this abstract class that a heap is attempting to implement. We have three main functions we want to be able to do. We want to be able to initialize the data structure. We want to be able to insert things into the data structure. And we want to be able to extract the maximum element from the data structure. Typically, we're going to be assuming that the things being stored are integers, but it doesn't really matter. A heap is an implementation of a priority queue. We implement it using a binary tree, not a binary search tree. So I'll show you a heap down here. Here's an example of a heap. Notice this is not a binary search tree. We will discuss those later in the class, but in a binary search tree, the left child must always be less than the node and the right child must always be greater than the node. And in this case, 42 is less than 48, but 23 is not greater than 48. So we are violating that idea of a binary search tree. This is just a binary tree, meaning that every single node ha has at most two children. Now, let's explain what makes this a heap. A heap is a binary tree where every single node is larger than or equal to its children. So if we check 48 is bigger than or equal to 42 and 23, 42 is bigger than or equal to 17 and 39, and then 17 is greater than 12 and 8, 39 is greater than 34 and 31, 23 is greater than 20 and 9, and 14 is greater than 20. It also has the very desirable property of being a nearly complete binary tree. We will always insert nodes so that we are only missing locations on the far right of the tree. We will never insert a node over here while there is a possible location over here to insert it. So we will guarantee this and that allows us to number these in a very convenient way. If I call the root of this tree location one and then this location two and this location three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, then this is a very convenient way to number this and we will actually represent this as an array. So let's write down the array corresponding to this heap. 48, 42, 23, 17, 39, 20, 9, 12, 8, 34, 31, and 14. That is the array that corresponds to this heap. And now we don't need to worry about finagling around with pointers necessarily, as long as we can think about what we're doing with the operations on this array, then we don't need to necessarily concern ourselves too much with pointers. So we'll keep this in mind as we're doing our various implementations. I mentioned that this is a nearly complete binary tree. So let us begin to discuss what does that mean and what properties does that have? One last comment that I'll make before we move on to bigger and better things is that this is what we call a max heap. This means that the parent is always greater than or equal to the children, which is some sort of strange philosophical question if we get think about it too hard, but let's not do that. And this is one implementation of a heap an alternative implementation you may have seen before would be a min heap. A min heap has the exact opposite property, which is that the parent is always less than or equal to the children. We are going to primarily focus on the max heap. All of the methods we do here will work just as well for a minimum heap as long as you make minor adjustments though. I said that a heap is a nearly complete binary tree, meaning that we are only missing children in the bottom right. A very reasonable question might be, do we have any understanding on how the number of elements in the heap, the number of nodes, in this case 12, relates to the height of the tree? I will actually do this by bounding the number of elements by pretending in my upper bound like the tree is completely full. This will provide an upper bound, so the number of elements n, that is the number of elements, number of elements. I can bound this above. I'm going to count the number of elements level by level. On the root level, there is one node. On the first child level, there are two nodes. On the second child level, there are four nodes. 
followed by eight nodes, followed by all the way up until the last level, there are at most two to the H nodes on the level for the height. In this case, the height of the tree was one, two, three, and there were at most eight nodes in that level. Now, let's try and solve this for the height so we can get some sort of bound on the height. Let us first compute the sum of those powers of two. If you've taken classes in binary representation, you should hopefully recognize that as the largest integer you can represent with H bits. So what we can do is actually write this as two to the H plus one minus one. If you don't feel comfortable doing it that way, you could just also look at our formula sheet and plug in and see what happens there. Let us solve that for H and we have N is less than or equal to two to the H plus one minus one. Let's add one to both sides. We have N plus one less than or equal to two to the H plus one. Take a log base two of both sides and we have log base two of n plus one is less than or equal to h plus one, and then subtract by one, and we have h is greater than or equal to log base two of n plus one minus one. So the height is at most log base two of n, and this is a very convenient fact. Lots of our algorithms will be bounded by the height of the tree, or that will play a role. So this is a convenient estimate to have. Let's even write it down. The height is at most log base two of n plus one. I'm ignoring the minus one for now to save myself a little bit of pain. We can keep track of it later if we so choose. Now, that is one useful fact we have. The other one is we claimed we could represent this as a array, and that is true, but we want to understand how can we access this and traverse the tree in a reasonable way. Typically the way you're going to traverse a tree is by following pointers in the tree and then figuring out where you go. So what is going to be the way I access the left node if I'm at a current node? So pretend I'm at node two here and I want to find my left child. Notice four is equal to two times two and then eight is equal to four times two, huh? Six is equal to three times two and 12 is equal to six times two. That's kind of convenient. So the left child will always just be twice the parent in a similar vein, the right child will always be one more than that, by definition of the way we were talking about these constructs before. So the left child is always two times the current level, the right child is always two times the current level plus one, and we can might be able to deduce from that that the parent is always going to be half of the child. So four to get back up to two, I would divide by two. Eight to get back up to four, I would divide by two. Nine to get back up to four, I would, oh no, divide by two? Oh, if I round that down, it works out though. So if we have nine divided by two, that's 4.5, rounded down is four. 11 divided by two, rounded down is again five, and it always seems to work out. And that will be one useful way to get our notation to look more like a typical tree and to obfuscate the fact that we are implementing this using an array. So let's write, look at those methods really quick. To get to the parent, we take our current index and divide by two. To get to the left child, we multiply by two, and to get to the right child, we multiply by two and add one. So nice, convenient methods for traversing the tree.